So I have uh, David Pickerell here. Um, he hasn't been on the podcast in a little bit, but he is probably, in fact, I know he is the person who's been on the podcast the most. <laughs> Thanks David, for having me back. David, how are you doing? I am doing well. I'm doing well. I was sort of uh, off the grid for a couple of days and back. Truly, back off, at it. Truly, back at it. truly off the grid. Your phone, did your phone go out? Oh, yeah. I kept it off the whole time. It was beautiful. <laughs> oh, okay. You're man made off the grid. Uh, a bit of both, but you know, when you're out in the wilderness, like. <laughs> well, that's what I know. meant. Did you actually yeah. run, just keep going until it was, I'm out of range, nothing can happen? <laughs> yeah, because I, I knew that at first I was like, I'm just not going to check it. But I'm like, you know, sometimes when you're hiking, you find that little bit of signal and right. then everything <laughs> comes in and you take one glance and all the stress comes back. So yeah, yeah. So it was, yeah, it was, so it was just better to yeah. shut it down. I get it, man. Yeah. Um, so um, I wanted to kind of just today a little bit walk through our history because I think a lot of people I it's funny when I talk to people who had no idea they're like well you just kind of uh, met him around the time Paris started I'm like no 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 <laughs> I'm like David and I met and I I kind of I don't I don't know if you'll correct me here and correct me if any parts of this are wrong but I truly believe it was like literally within 24 hours of the cares act being signed yeah it was uh yeah right after the cares act was signed uh i actually i was trying to remember how we met each other i think what had happened is we built this just simple tool right which is like answer five questions and we'd scraped all the government info and we could say hey after you answer these five questions here's what ppp will pay you here's what eidl will pay you here's what you unemployment will pay you and for each of the 50 states here's the most recent update and i think you would actually reach you're, out you're, to me. you're actually getting a, a step ahead though you're actually yeah. to where we had that on your old or on your other site autonomy.jobs yeah because before that if you remember we met when i was doing research at my house on PUA because it hadn't even started in most states. We just knew it was coming for gig workers. Yes. And now I'm doing research. I remember though, you you reached out to me and you're just like, hey, yeah, like this exactly. stuff isn't right. 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 And no, no. Like, and but yeah. you were doing that air table thing. So I saw yeah. so you and I yeah. were kind of doing that same thing. And it's like, well, wait. And we met and then we said, let's do this together. And we yep. just kind of started like tackling different things and coming at this and throwing new information as we could. But yeah. Um, I remember at the time it was awesome because I was also running this separate project where we were doing uh, COVID testing for the city of Bolinas. So yeah, I would I be sort of uh, like, you know, yeah. tied up the whole day and you'd be hitting me up being like, dude, a bunch of <laughs> updates happened. All these states changed today. Like, you know, can you give me right <laughs> access to the air table? And I was like, at, at first I was like, you know, is he right? Then I looked it up. I'm like, dude, Steve is on top of this shit. <laughs> you know, please, please have at it. <laughs> like, I know. And I remember that too, because at the same time you were, you were getting my friend in for a test. And yeah. to the listeners, this is when testing was not like super simple to go find. You had to be on, this is when I think you still had to be on like lists, right? Uh, I mean, we went like, what to you, like, what you guys did for that city was for that city to kind of get a, a, a read on it. Yeah, we sort of had to pay for the tests and pay exactly. for exactly. You know, we had to invent the. That was before drive-through testing was a thing. We had to. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm that. saying. Like yeah. this is before the mega center drive-ups and the even the little ones and stuff, and way before any kind of CVS or Walgreens or anything. This is. I remember you guys had those little like either twenty by twenty pop tents, and cars were pulling in. I remember the pictures you sent me, and it yeah, it was way before that. So. But that happened, yeah. then then autonomy.jobs happened. And that's when you start doing those flow questions. And we integrated yeah. that and it, it was producing data out. Yeah. So we could we could tell people like at least they should be able to gauge where they should be. It did I remember it wasn't precise because every you and I were kind of basing it, if I remember right, on the because we had heard the lowest amount of each state's unemployment weekly is what gig workers were going to get plus the 300 but then yeah. as we as we learned some gig workers got more than that though yeah however if i remember you and i based it on the minimum whatever the minute because we yeah. were told the minimum in the state plus 300 is what yeah. gig workers will get and it's sort of funny because I think, you know, it's a, it was a very different project, but I think it's really in the same sort of vein, right? Which is this information's out there. 
it's too hard for people to find information, the right information to make an informed decision. It doesn't need to be that hard. You should just let people make the decision for what's right for them, right? And it's sort of ironic. I mean, what ended up happening with Pero was different, obviously, but it's actually quite a, you know, it's in a similar vein, basically. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that's kind of so, and then what, but then what happened too? Then autonomy.jobs, and there was a couple of things that happened where even me <laughs> going on it all the time, like something really cool would be up there and then it was gone. And I was like, we had oh. that sort of, the second project was sort of like, <laughs> uh, I remember you chatted with a lady on CNBC and we got a very, very short reference in an article. And what was cool with that is I remember something like five or 6,000 people over the course of a two or three days used the tool and found it helpful. And we mm -hmm. thought that was pretty great. So we tried to run that tool for a while. And I think the next question that came to mind was like, hey, uh, now that you're collecting unemployment for a lot of people, uh, does it make sense to start working again? Because we saw a lot of people online basically being like, hey, uh, well, you know, I'm on UI. Does it make sense to work? And that was actually quite a complex question to answer. I mean, the conclusion was you should either work fewer than five hours or work more than 40 hours because there was this weird curve of like if you earned more than a certain amount, you'd lose your unemployment basically. So we built that tool, but that was a really hard tool because that like showing that is very hard to explain oh, basically. Yeah. Right. Uh, but I know. do remember like, if you were willing to get out there and do it, it was worth it to like, uh, if you, well, this gets complicated too, but if you were getting PUA every, yeah. and then, and then you knew this huge week long event was coming and you could make a ton of money, you were okay to just not claim that week and work. Yep. And then go yep. right back to it. That, that was kind of a thing that I don't think normal UI, I'd have to look into that, but really allows you. They actually look yeah. into things if you say you start working. But they were giving that option of, hey, if you work, just either claim it, that what you earn so that it zeros, or just don't, claim, just don't put it in there and don't claim anything that week. So yeah. it was, uh, yeah. And for me, I think we were trying to answer that question. And I think the next part of that question became, hey, if you have to go out and work right now, uh, roughly what would you make, right? Uh, <laughs> and I think that was the beginning of that income tracker, right? Because I right. went out and I started looking at every Facebook group and started, everyone, you know how it is on the Facebook groups. Hey, I make 30 bucks a day, an hour. Yep. Hey, I make 40 bucks an hour. Hey, I make 20 bucks an hour. And started putting that all in a spreadsheet and just realized that that wasn't helpful to anybody, right? It was just, you know, all over the place for everywhere, right? And right. just not enough data. So I think that was the beginning of that autonomy job. It was like a web web portal income tracker right, right. and uh, and date and shortly after data receiver for other workers <laughs> yes <laughs> like that's when it was really became in fact for any of you confused too like i know there's still those those couple people who asked about the para tos i believe it's just the same tos copied over and at the time that tos would have been needed for what we were yeah. doing so if you were confused yeah. by that that was literally one of those but also yeah. before you move on it, you, you got to realize at this point from like the cares act to where david's talking about now which is probably what like august maybe yeah october of last year yeah this was a good yeah this was a good many months but between before. between that end of april or end of march and that whatever wherever we're at in the timeline now let's call it end of august uh you know, David and I were talking like literally like every other day. It was yeah. pretty, I mean, I just think that's interesting for people to know because we always had so many ideas. I mean, not like we were abandoning them. I just think we had some really great brainstorming sessions that, um, yeah. You know. It reminded me of the beauty of the internet, right? It's like, it was, it's a very internet moment where yeah. somebody's like, hey, you're wrong. And somebody's like, yeah, you're right. And it's now like, now we're best friends, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, man. It, it was cool. Yeah. Every, you were one of those people when I saw the phone ring during the pandemic, I was like, oh, cool. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like, oh, no, no. Like, I'm always <laughs> thankful that you're just like, you were just you weren't just like yo who's this guy who has no idea what he's talking about like trying to do this stuff so, yeah. well i mean i just kind of do you know you you know when you meet people you can read them but um yeah. but yeah so then then the data did any and did anything else happen with autonomy before para 
Uh, yeah, I think so. We launched the sort of, I mean, it was built off of Argyle, which a lot of people right. now know about. It was just a very simple, hey, for each of the weeks, days, months you earned, what is the earning by platform? What's the hourly rate? You know, think sort of a Gridwise or some of these other apps, basically. So right. ours was just a free version of that uh, based on the web browser. It eventually became the app in the app. Uh, and, you know, I think that... I think the portion that yeah. gathered your data went beyond what Gridwise does. Maybe, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, yes. So I think because, we did... Because you and I were at a point where, like, we were testing with friends and stuff, mostly. Yeah. Just people, yeah. other drivers that we knew. But, I mean, like, when we were getting it to really, truly work, it was bringing through whole packets of every ride. Going yes, back you could get it history. down to the ride level. Yeah, like, you could look at your entire <laughs> was, history in a way that DoorDash couldn't. <laughs> Right. right? Uh, and you could really drill into some interesting stuff. And to be honest, I think, uh, I mean, this is a bit of a sneak preview, but that functionality is coming back over the next couple of weeks here. So uh, well, a slightly better version of it. But yeah. yeah. So actually let's, so that's, we, I just wanted to give you guys a little history on David. So those of you who just thought when Paris started, all of us just kind of banded together and somehow knew each other. It was kind of even weirder than that. <laughs> So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's even deeper. I know we figured after that we also did the we worked on this retroactive mileage tracker. Remember also where it's oh, like, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. That's what I was trying track, to think of. Yeah. Yeah. If you didn't track your miles, we could go back and paint the picture of what you did from using your, your from your trip history. Right. Uh, what, <laughs> when tax season comes around again, we'll roll that one out too. I thought that was that one was something I was quite proud of because uh yeah uh, it just seemed so obvious, right? But we actually had to jump through a whole bunch of, you know, we had to go find a really good lawyer and get mm. his blessing because you know, whenever you're dealing with stuff with the IRS, you just want to be super careful. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, and at the time, though, again, I mean, it really was just a handful of us, even the testing people. Yeah. Uh, like, but I, I felt think a I lot more comfortable with it because, I mean, like, even if people did come to you or whatever and asked, like, it was like, it was like a real, hey, do you understand we're doing this? We're in a beta mode. Yeah. This is not, um, we're not touching your data. But I mean, it was a real walkthrough almost to, to do it when we were doing, I feel like. Yeah, what was what I was proud of is I forget what the final number was, but yeah, we you know, a lot of veteran listeners here will be like, who doesn't know to track their miles, right? You know, it's free money. Right. But frankly, we had people who are driving, you know, tens, if not, you know, lots and lots and lots of miles, but they'd only started driving in the pandemic and they just didn't know to track their miles, right? So we had, I forget what the running total was, but we got over four hundred thousand dollars back in tax, you know, mileage deductions for people, which you know, not uh, not uh, not in terms of deduction, but actual dollars in pockets, right? So right. I think it ended up being like yes. four hundred thousand dollars in pockets uh, from mm -hmm. that tool, which was pretty cool. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and then autonomy changed to Para with Para. dot com, and that what the reason? What was the first thing that was with with Para? Now, the reason uh, when it changed? I mean, I think when it changed, it was just flipping it over. But then, what was the first thing? Because it wasn't yeah, think, Door, it wasn't DoorDash. We were still doing something else. Yeah, I think uh, we were trying. There was a, a whole path we'd investigated, which was a uh, one-click apply. Oh, that's right. That's yes. what it was. So, yes. Yes. Could I take a? Could you take a central profile on behalf of somebody? Because there was a lot of people who, during the pandemic, wanted to work Instacart. Right, but didn't have an account because they hadn't signed up before. Then you got put into the wait list. So we had this: uh, Hey, fill out a central profile, and we will, on your behalf, try to make sure you have access to all the apps that you can. Uh, you know, at first it was basically me and Jimmy filling out all of these profiles and all the platforms for people. We built a, you know, we built a system that would do that. Um, right, but it was more taking the information and spreading it to each of the applications. Whereas, okay. like, who is it? Checker that does rideshare and even most of the delivery and stuff checks. That's, yeah. I mean, we didn't have that connection, but not you and I, but with them, like you had with Argyle, let's say. But yeah. I mean, had we, that's probably where the best deal would have been made. Yep. Hey, can yes we just no. run the checks through you and then you send all that out to? I mean, I guess they probably they have a. I'm sure they're under contract. I think the, the I, my guess would be the problem checker is that uh, it's in their interest to have every platform run the background check again and again and again. And and I guess that uh, um, 
yeah, I guess I can say this is that uh, I'm not sure Checker is that good of a company. <laughs> and I'm not just being rude. I mean, I just know of a lot of people falsely deactivated um, background checks that get backlogged three months that should yeah. be a day. Just weird stuff. It seems like there should be a much better company streamlining, streamlining that. But I think the thing that I think is like, it sounds like there are all these really, you know, did we you know we worked on a whole bunch of like, different types of projects I but i think sort of what i was referencing earlier uh i think it's all part of the same underlying motivation which is just it's too hard to do things that it's too hard to do things in the current way and it shouldn't be that hard exactly. and we want to build what at the time i called sort of a gig hq which would represent the individual driver and their sets of beliefs right, right. Uh, so i know like you know what eventually uh, it was funny. It's like because of the fact that the earnings tracker uh, was not perfect, we wanted to try and find a way to pull the earnings data more real time because a lot of the time it would take a couple hours for it to come in. And it was through the process of looking at that, uh, you know, that we started down this uh, tip transparency route, really. Right. Uh, but, you know, the way I put it is, I still see a world in which these what seem like disparate projects are still all tied together under your gig HQ under para, right? Because I still oh, think I, that, I, full, I fully yeah. agree. I think every yeah. project we've tried, even no matter what, that's kind of the point of why we went through this right now is because yeah. I want the listeners to hear that, like, you know, here we were trying ideas, but really, if you look at it, everything was for the workers. Yeah. You know, I mean, every step of this way, it was how can we make you more money how can we make you data safe how can we help you i mean the amount of calls that david and i made and i'm sure some of you listening probably got called by us <laughs> but i mean seriously even before jimmy the amount of calls that you and i were making on a daily basis with people we didn't know yeah was pretty amazing yeah, I mean, and I think it was like, you know, we found a bunch of these pain points and were able to help some people. And I think now really where our mind is, is like with uh, that, like, you know, we were lucky to be able to help so many drivers with tip transparency. I think the point we're at now is how do we tie all of this together uh, in a coherent, you know, in a coherent way, basically. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're new to the gig economy, like if you just signed up for your first gig economy platform today, or for some reason you've been living in a cave during COVID and uh, you just haven't heard of the Paris situation. Um, in a nutshell, I'm sure all of you, especially delivery people and DoorDash people know that uh, Para, what you, what you probably know Para for is uh, the tip transparency that David's talking about that for about, I don't know, I wanna say 12 weeks maybe about that, somewhere in there maybe give take. Um, ran perfectly, which was showing you the full DoorDash tip transparency. And we know it, we know a lot of people out there were using it and we're so happy. And, uh, and then David, um, had the, uh, it was, I think it was two weeks ago it was the Grubhub launch. And even though I know that when we were talking before, I, I, I felt like you were like, yeah, and then they, you know, they launched it, but you know, as well as I do, because you've always said this to me and I've appreciated is that as long as they do it, it's fine. But it was like within yeah. hours of Grubhub feature going live on the Para app, Grubhub had it. So it's all, you know, they didn't code it. You know, they had it coded like in a ready state of like, if Para launches this, press this red button. <laughs> yeah. And I think I really like the, the quote that you said there, right? Which is, uh, I think this is, and it's confused people rightfully so, right? It's like, transparency is a fundamental right of workers we believe that that's yes. not the business we're in that's our, our end goal is to get transparency for people and so at the end of the day if we can stop providing that because the platforms do that great that's like we've accomplished our goal right that's what we set out to do yeah uh, but transparency alone isn't enough to make uh to make the like you know the overall situation better i think right so we're glad that transparency did well, we're going to continue to fight for transparency, right? Because at the end of the day, we still haven't accomplished the goals we want there. Uh, but we also do have these other initiatives, because at the end of the day, I think you need multiple prongs uh, to sort of, you know, shift the balance of power back to the driver. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And I think that that's why 
each step of this learning thing. It's the same as me with the podcast. You know, if I can't even go back and listen to the initial episodes because they're just yeah. too, it's, it's not like they're bad. They're just too strange to me. I sound yeah. weird and I didn't know what I was doing, but I mean, like even when we got started, we kind of knew we were doing what we wanted to achieve, but um, I feel like, you know, it's one of those things where I feel like every move with Para has been stronger. So, I mean, if, if people, I, mean, I know people familiar with Para know what noise we created or that the whole Para movement created created with DoorDash because they really wouldn't have even poked their head from around a corner unless this was a very concerning thing to them. You know, they would yeah. just, what they like to do with these little companies, like something like Para that starts is hope they don't grow too big and ignore them. That is their job. Ignore this. It's not happening. It's not a big deal. But then when it gets out of hand, they have to start watching and so, I mean, really, like, it's, it's, it's always a tough thing to try and do this, but you have to take these as wins. I mean, not you, David, all of us, because they are wins. Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, uh, really our goal, right, is like, how can you make life easier for drivers? It should be easier to do the things that you want to do. Uh, and also, how can we just make sure that people, you know, earn more with their time? Right. And right. I think that's where a lot of uh, our effort is going over the next couple of months. Right. So what you're going to see is, uh, you know, fingers crossed in the next couple of days, uh, Grubhub up and working. Uh, what we want to be able to do is make it so that it's super simple for you to manage your delivery work from one central place. Right. right. So coming up next, I'll have an accept and decline button within Para. We'll have some automation and the goal being like, hey, what do you want to accomplish? Do you only want to work within this certain mile radius? Can you only work during these time blocks? How does that look like? Right. Uh, and then how can we help uh, arrange that for you? And I think the second prong of that actually is like the best way to make more money is actually to have more competition for your time, right? And that's always been sort of my crazy dream and call me crazy for it. But like, I imagine a world in which, especially during busy times, uh, platforms should bid for a driver's time, right? And I think what people don't realize is in the last couple of years, uh, you know, it's not just Uber and Lyft anymore, right? There's two or 300 of these companies, but having, you know, me or you, Steve, expected to know they exist and scan them and all of that, that's a tough ask, right? But mm -hmm. I think uh, that's something that we hope we can do for you is let's get these companies bidding for your time because at the end of the day, uh, competition for time means more money for you, right? I think there's a second arm of that, which is then once you have lots of opportunities, can you smartly combine them in a way that makes you even more time, right? So like right. I'm driving point A to point B with DoorDash. There's some packages to be picked up two minutes from point B. And we know that they want these to be dropped off at a warehouse near where you live, right? Uh, you know, over the course of the next day or two, we could bring those back. By the way, if you just do the math, for five minutes of your time, you made 30 bucks. That's pretty good, right? right? Because you only took two minutes here and three minutes there. So like for me, I mean, that's sort of the crazy longer term dream of mine, but it's, uh, you know, yeah. Having people compete for you, right? Uh, I agree. At the end of the day, we, yeah. I agree. And I think that, I think that you, before we started recording, because David and I were talking for a few minutes first. Um, so I'm not, I'm not giving anything away here, but I just want to say that I think that what you were touching on too, with, you know, um, bringing those smaller companies in that at the same time that people are looking at these giants and their, what their rates are, and we're, you know, trying to figure out what's best for them, what's mo making most, um, is to have those smaller ones that are competing heavy, like, you know, um, like Curry, like I was talking to you about with Curry, who yeah. sponsors the show right now. Um, you know, I need like, a better term. I've been calling this uh, a personal dispatch system on behalf of each individual driver. So right, the way yeah. I put it is, you know, something that represents you and your goals and your sets and preferences, and we'll go talk to all your options, yes. have them come into one place, compete with each other, and then combine it in the way that only you know that is best for you. But what a way, but like, what a great way to let the small companies grow to show up in para is like if you and if you can do the math and go well wait a minute that's gonna take me the same amount of time it's twice as much yeah uh, <laughs> like, and i think you, might, you know i think you might start seeing some things that make you think wait a minute 
I don't need. Yeah, or also the way I put it too is like if you combine two other, there, we've been seeing a lot of this, which is interesting. Is like if you combine two opportunities. I mean, people do this in delivery already, right? Sort of multi-apping, right? But imagine right. multi-apping beyond just food delivery, right? And you know, we've been running these small experiments, and I can say that like you know, there you know, you can smartly combine things in a way that will increase your earnings, uh, which is right. exciting. Yeah. 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 And then one idea I had too, uh, geez, I can't believe I'm saying this live, but, uh, um, was remember when you and I were talking about letting drivers have profiles within para. Yes. Wouldn't it be a cool, like, and remember, cause one of the things we had talked about was that letting drivers have the profiles and listing maybe what else they might do. You know what I mean? Like, Hey, we might do gardening too, or other things and other, and somehow that might've been a thing, but it was just a little snippet of an idea. I was thinking it'd be pretty cool to let, especially rideshare drivers, um, have a profile that's you know allowed them to like day rate themselves, like the limo companies used to do almost. Like if you have a night and yeah. it's on your call, I mean, you could have a, a gremlin, you could have a car that's a gremlin from 1976, <laughs> or you could have a new Mercedes that you like to do that kind of stuff. But it would be up to you, and I mean, no guarantee on what anybody would do, but. I know I used to really like day rate rides. I liked it when I worked for the limo company. I didn't like doing limo, but I liked it when I would get private, private hire car for the day. Cause that yeah, always meant a that. huge tip, huge tip at the end of the day on top. Or for me, I've been going out and doing some of these trips. So we've found some of these platforms that are saying, Hey, like, you know, you have a little bit of the schedule ahead, right? So like on Monday, we know that there's an opportunity on Thursday right during this time period for this much and i personally have liked that a lot because i then use that as a base upon which i will go do other trips so i'll basically go and take the trip on monday for thursday and be like okay thursday i know between noon and 12 30 i have this trip for this much money uh, i'm going to make sure i'm in that area beforehand i'm going to turn on my doordash when i'm near that trip to see if i can stack a doordash trip on top of it uh, mm -hmm. stuff like that basically yeah. right? but i think at the end of the day uh, we just want to I think too much technology is built to make you do something. And we want to build technology that uh, just does what you want to do just in a way that you can't humanly do. Right. And right. I think that's I, really our marching order. I, yeah, exactly. And I actually, the way you just said that I had somebody say to me, you know, these, these platforms are being counterintuitive to each other so that they're abusing workers. And I was like, actually, these platforms are being very intuitive to each other. Like, if you don't think Uber watches every other gig platform and works off how their manipulation algorithms work based on these other algorithms, you're crazy. Of course they do. Like, they know you're not just out there for Uber. They know you could be driving Lyft and whatever else, and they're doing anything they can to get you to not go home, even if you don't get work. We all know this. They just want as yeah, many or, people on the road at all times as possible. Why else do you have to click four or five times to define a DoorDash order? I don't know. Your phone's old? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, man, that's all I really wanted to do is it's, I mean, it's been a while and I wanted to have you on. I wanted to let people know that there is a, uh, there's stuff coming out on para, you know, I know it's been a little bit since people have heard it, but that, I think that was needed. I think a little break from everything was needed. Um, you know, yeah, I think, uh, you get know, the trolls uh, out of the way. I think they're kind of gone and yeah. And I think, <laughs> you know, maybe I should have talked a bit more, but I think we've just been really heads down on what can we do to help next. Right. Uh, and I think just, you know, we've had a consistent, you know, we've, we've always had this consistent belief, right, of this sort of empowering people to make their own decisions. And I think now, at least, uh, you know, I see a world in which we could build this thing, this personal dispatch system on behalf of each driver, right? And I think uh, hopefully together we'll be able to build this. Yeah, uh, but even until then, David, and you know this as well as I, every time one, I, this is kind of where this whole piece was, is every time one idea didn't happen, it was just another time that our, our brains fired up about something and brought it into something else. Like it's, it's coming. It's, I mean, I truly believe that. I know that some people, you know, might be like, you know, I loved Para. As soon as they do something else, I'll come back. Or some people are really into it and waiting, but 
I'm just saying that I know it's around the corner. I know that I have no doubt that the next thing isn't coming. And I almost feel like it always ends up being something we're not looking for. <laughs> so, I mean, honestly, something's just going to click because something's going to upset us on one of the platforms. It's going to do yeah, something and it's going to be like, damn it. And we're going to look and there's going to be a way to get. <laughs> and frankly, it's not even, I would say it's not even us or even me. It's like uh, all these good ideas have been uh, an expression of something somebody has told us about or somebody has mentioned to us. Right. Because exactly. at the end of the day, exactly. I'm a deliverer, but I haven't, you know, I've done some trips, but there are many people who know it so much better than I do. Right. right. So if there are any That's... of those who are listening, I will always open to all ears because everything that you know everything that we've managed to help people with so far has been uh, because of somebody else right right yeah and i mean that's kind of goes to what i said about like when you and i were just calling 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 and i remember i got in my habit because of the pua stuff that's really what got me calling people but that was pretty cool because then when it came to recalling people i was able to start with those people and get back in my groove like hey man i already made friends with these guys let me get my groove on with them trying to tell them about the things we were doing, you know, I mean, cause really like we, I think we did a good job even in the early days of getting people to come on board and try everything, you know? Yeah. I do remember, uh, you know, you sending, you sending one of the versions of this to your friends and then immediately, oh, yeah. of course, the whole, yeah. the whole thing crashed and nothing worked at all. On, on, <laughs> yeah. It wasn't, I, I mean, I sent it to a few friends, but was it, there was one specific friend. I remember was pretty funny like he kept are you sure this is working god damn it like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah i was uh, i was at my aunt's house and it was like my cousin's birthday and i remember being like i gotta go i've gotta run <laughs> <laughs> well um well i'm kind of looking forward to the next thing and i know that already things are being worked on but uh yeah people don't you know don't you know don't put don't forget about para. I know you won't forget when you hear it the next time, but don't forget about it. it you know, I am, it's not in the news right now, or it's not in the social media strings, maybe too much. But that's a good thing. Cause all that was doing was acquiring trolls. The real followers are already there and the new ones will come when the next feature comes. Yeah. At you the end of the day, this is sort of a, a movement that's bigger than any of us individually, or even bigger than para, right? It's right. just uh, fighting for what's right. Right. So as long as we stay true to that, uh, hopefully we get a chance of much more to come. So I think I did. I, I know it is. I know it is. In fact, I don't think the biggest things happened. I think what you're talking about, a personal dispatch system, something like that is going to be what really rocks the cradle because there isn't going to be a cease and desist to something like that because it's going to be like, no, not doing what you do. It's something different. So <laughs> yeah, I know, you know, and it makes sense, right? It's like companies have classified drivers as independent contractors. Let's take full advantage of what that means, right. right? Which is you have the ability to use the tools that you see fit for your job. You have, you should have ability to have uh, the underlying data that powers all of that. And you should have competition for your time. So let's, you know, let's do what we can to make that happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as always, dude, it's good hearing from you. I'm glad you're back from the woods. You look good. You look like you got rested. And... Yeah, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm back back with energy. So yeah. life's good. But uh, yeah, thanks for doing this with me today. And uh, um, let's talk soon. Sounds good. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, hold on. Don't hang up. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I think that went pretty well. Uh, I do too. Uh, I do too. Sorry, that was on my end. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, I think that was uh, really good, actually. I think that's a good thing for people to hear right now. Yeah, you can also tell, I think I'm just like, my energy's back. I feel like that's I what so I mean. Tired. Like that's yeah, I was like, kind of taking advantage of it. Like, like yeah. wait a minute, he's got a bunch of energy and I'm going to just keep letting him light off a little. Yeah, 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 yeah. I needed, I needed the break. I'm back to, I'm back to myself. So. <laughs> right. I mean, people will hear that in your tone, man. It's, it's sounding good. Uh, but yeah, other than that, man... Um, I, oh, now I always remember what I was going to ask you, though, is uh, when you were going to Park City, damn it. I, I know you went with your sister, right? Yeah, yeah. I was, so, I was trying to I was trying to sort of divert and come through Colorado these couple of days. But I, I was get like, it, I, though, dude. We need to get back to work. We need to get yeah. back to work. And just, yeah, like, I mean, you'd yeah. been out for a while. 
but yeah, yeah I mean, but next time, happen. next time you're even close, man, let me know. I don't, I do trips like that all the time. Yeah. That's kind of like on the farther end of what I would call like a, a quick run trip. Yeah. But like I go to, I go to Moab that takes five and a half hours. You know, I go to yeah. Telluride that's six. I sort of like, like, I don't mind those long drives. I feel like a lot of people don't like them, but I find them sort of like meditative. Yeah. I mean, it's right about the park city length. I think that's about seven or eight for us. That's about the point where I don't mind even a 40 hour road trip if I plan it. But if it's just like to get somewhere, like about eight is where I'm like, "Uh." yeah, yeah. (laughs) but, um, yeah, welcome back, dude. I'm glad that you're okay. And, uh, I don't know. Keep me in the loop. Let's stay, t- let's stay in touch. Yeah. Let's, oh, and let's the, oh, oh shit. I didn't even mention it. I'll mention it at the end. It was the, uh, something with the gig worker bill of right, man. Yes. Cause that should go on to the, um, to both our websites. Yes. Because I'm, I'm making a, uh, um, it's not going to be called friends or whatever, but it's going to have all the things that like para, um yeah. curry right now not every single person i know and it's not just going to be like links like every some people do in their youtube videos or whatever it's gonna be on the on the website and it's gonna have like a picture and a short description on each as like projects and you can click on each one yeah i mean here i mean as per usual i mean i just got up thursday friday let's just sit down put some time sure um yeah, one's good for you I'm pretty good on both of those days. Listen, just see where I'm starting here. Yeah, I'm pretty good on those days. It's like 3 p.m. for you Thursday? I could uh, do it beforehand too. I could do it earlier or later. Um yeah. Uh yeah, 3 p.m. Thursday will work. I was just waiting to hear back. I've been doing these bonus episodes till we, Jason Thierry and I are doing a radio show with TNC live or TNC radio dot live. It's a call. It's a call in show two hours every Friday. It's awesome. And it's live. Uh, So it's good. It's two truckers and then two rideshare people, me and Jason. Oh, that's cool. I like that. So yeah. yeah, And it's, they've got like literally like 800 lines, like it's old school call in and you'll be on the, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's something Uh, nice about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be kind of fun. So um, I've been doing these Friday episodes too. So I'm just waiting to hear back from uh, Idaho Jason because I was going to have him do this Friday and because ex- I never had him explain the his take on traveling the country and working in all those different markets for delivery. Yeah. Hey, I was I was up, that. I was off his neck of I was off his neck of the woods. I, should, I didn't know that. <laughs> you, you were yeah, you were. Well, no. Yeah. Were you? Idaho? I was uh well on that border, sort of Utah, Utah, Idaho. Oh, Hold he, on. Right. He's on the other side. He's, he's on, on the other side, bro. He's on the yeah. Oregon side. The boy he lives in Boise. Okay, yeah, yeah. So not not then. Yeah. I mean, it probably would have been like five, six hours from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not <laughs> then, but... Um so yeah, Saturday is, or Thursday is the ninth. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I'll throw some hold here, and if not, we can play it by ear. But I will just throw that here because I'm. Oop, where did that go? What time did you say? Uh, we could do. I mean, uh, like three, which is four for you, or two here, which is three for you. Um, either yeah, four, four, four here is three for you. That works. Yeah. Cool. I, shoot, I shot that over. Do I still, and I know you sent it a couple times now, do I still have access and will I find the, Yeah, the yeah. I will, I'll, I need to go dig the thing up too, so I will. I, will I think you that. resent it to me. I, I don't know. Yeah. I should be able to search for your name and find it in my emails. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but okay, the ninth at four. Yeah. Huh, I think the, I actually think the last time we chatted, I chatted with your mother briefly, very, very briefly. I remember that. Oh yeah, I was probably at her house. Car. Yes, yeah, you were picking her up. She's nice yeah, lady. she's just getting through her eye surgeries and stuff. Yeah, she had both a uh, she had a uh, what do you call it uh, cataracts. Yeah, and she and doing, uh, her insurance she's doing good. Yeah, but her insurance didn't cover LASIK, dude. So hmm. she had to have the old school. <laughs> like, while yeah. you're while you're awake, I don't know. 
<laughs> but she's she's good. All recovery. Oh, she's great. She's had both eyes yeah. done now. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Um, she can yeah. see again. So. Yeah, I had a one after bouncing a minute. I realized I have a call here, but I had something you'd no, appreciate, which is my dog. My dog bit a bee, and then her face just puffed up like. Oh, dude, I had that happen before. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, bee, yeah. the bee, the bee bit it on the inside. Yeah, yeah, dude, she looked. So she just looked like a comic book. Yeah, she did looked you, like a comic book. Did you <laughs> give her? Did you give her a, a Benadryl? Yeah, yeah. Then it went away, but it was really yeah. funny. She just became. Oh, here you go, right? Like. Oh, dude! Yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> I had a dog do that once too. <laughs> I used to have a golden retriever that would catch them and yeah. keep them in his mouth and then open it and let them back out. Yeah. And I never understood it. And then one time one just nailed him. Like, yeah. He was just like, screw you, dude. And like, she looked like a cartoon version of herself. It was really funny. <laughs> like, did she learn her lesson? Will she never bite a bee again? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Something tells me she will. So like, she's still 10 months old. So she doesn't She's going to look at him and be like, it won't happen again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, dude. All right, cool. Good to Talk see you, to you Thursday. Yep.